All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today I am reviewing James Rollins' Map of Bones, book number two in his Sigma Force series. If you followed my channel just the other day, I reviewed book number one, Sandstorm. Now we're reviewing book number two. And the Sigma Force series came out in 2005. We always review the covers first, because you know I love book illustration and graphic design. So let's take a look at this. It's pretty good. You know I'm not a fan of the oblong books here, you know. Regular paperbacks are this size. And for some reason now publishers are turning them into this oblong size, which sucks. But it's something out of our control, so we just gotta live with it. That being said, the cover's pretty cool. It's It's got a nice glossy gold cover, which is a gold is a theme in this book. So that makes sense. It's kind of got these hidden figures here, the three magi that are taking, um, the three kings of Orient B that take the treasures to Christ when he's born. Um, from the song, I you, you know the story of Jesus' birth. Anyway, those guys are represented here. <clears throat> Pretty slick looking cover. Let's talk about the book. Starts out in 1162 in the Italian Alps as some uh, monks are sneaking some sarcophaguses or sarcophagi through the Alps towards Germany, specifically they're taking them to Cologne, Germany, from Milan, Italy, because there's some troubles with the Pope, there's a false Pope, or whatever you wanna say, and they just wanna get these important bones that are that are belonging these sarcophagi out of, out of the, they gotta wanna get them out, there's something important about them. We don't wanna discuss that up front, because it's spoilery, let's just say, they're getting the sarcophagi out of, out of Italy and up to Germany to the Cologne Cathedral in 1162. Then we jump, that's the prologue, it's about five pages long, then we jump to our modern day and we've got two kids going through the Cologne Cathedral. They're little, like little love teenage lovebirds of Amer Americans on tour. The first ever place when I, the first ever place I went in Europe was Cologne. The first ever thing that I ever, the first ever historic thing I saw in Europe, piece of architecture, was the Cologne Cathedral. Which, by the way, is amazing. Google it. If you don't know what it is, just Google it. It's crazy magnificent. The Cologne Cathedral is where this takes place at the beginning. And I've been in the Cologne Cathedral, so I know what it's like there. Um, now, in the book, terrorists show up. The only thing of note that happened when I was in the Cologne Cathedral is I was asked to remove my Raiders hat. Apparently they don't like the Raiders over there. Or it's just, you know, irreverent to wear a hat inside of a cathedral. I don't know which it was, but I was asked to take off the Raiders hat. In the story, some terrorists show up in the Cologne Cathedral and kill everybody in the Cologne Cathedral, especially those who had taken the uh, sacrament wafer. Because they showed up during one of the special sacraments. And someone, uh, everybody that took the sacrament wafer dies in a really grotesque way. Like, it's almost like everybody that took that wafer just has some sort of electronic thing go off in their head that just turns their brains instantly to jelly. And it's like nuclear explosion in their head. Very mysterious death. Very, very mysterious. But it all ties into the gold cover here we have. And a few other things, scientific things, which are explained throughout the book. I won't explain them here. And the scientific realities of which are also um, gone over in the afterword. That's the one thing that's cool about these James Rollins Sigma Force books is in the afterwards. James Rollins tells you about all the science that he actually, that's actually in these books and how realistic it is. Okay, anyway, 
The terrorists kill everybody in Cologne Cathedral, except for one of the teenagers, survives and can identify the terrorists. And they take the three sarcophagi out of Cologne Cathedral, which, if you read the back, those sarcophagi are really there in the cathedral. I mean, it's a real thing. Anyway, now that's our big global horrific terrorist event. In comes the Sigma Force. Now, if you watch my other review, you, you know I'm wondering why they're called Sigma Force. Why aren't they called Alpha Force? Because um, that just sounds more badass than Sigma Force. Certainly better than Beta Force. I mean, we don't want Beta Force. I mean, Beta Force are the guy. I mean, when the government wants people to, like, say, start simping for socialism, that's when we call Beta Force. Sigma Force is for serious shit. Alpha Force, which doesn't exist, would be for the even really, really more serious shit. But anyway, I digress. It is Sigma Force. We're just going to have to live with the fact that they're Sigma Force, not Alpha Force. I would have called them Alpha Force. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, Grace and Pierce and um, Painter Crow. Painter Crow was in the book Sandstorm, book one of Sigma Force. He was the main guy. He's still in this. But in comes a new character named Grace and Pierce. And uh, a thing called liquid body armor. I did not know that there was actual liquid body armor. Kind of like the Terminator 2, where the guy was all liquid and bullets would just... Anyway, that's a real thing, and they wear it in here. And now um, they go on this adventure to find out who these terrorists were and what these sarcophagi were and why they're so important. And so Sigma Force team gathers Grace and Pierce. There's a guy named Monk. There's a, guy, a girl named Cat Bryant. These are the Sigma Force team members that go on this. They team up with someone named Rachel in Verona, Italy. And they, um, actually, there's a scene in here where they travel, Sigma Force travels from Cologne, Germany to Milan, Italy in, in four hours. I've made that trip. I made that exact trip. But these guys drove it fast. I, and if you look at a map, you if you went really fast, you could do it. Uh, everything in Europe is kind of compressed and right in there. I mean, you wouldn't think that from Mal Cologne, uh, Germany, which is at the northern end of Germany, you have to go clear through Germany and through Switzerland and into Italy to get to Milan. Seems like a long way. It's only four hours. I've done that drive. I spent my time. I took like 20 days. And I visited... All the castles. Oh, I started at the Cologne with the Cologne Cathedral. I visited the castles on the Rhine and Heidelberg and Baden-Baden. And then the Black Forest I went through. And then I went through Zurich and Lucerne and um, Lauterbrunnen Valley and Interlaken. Actually, I went to the Hooters in Interlaken. Just saying. And then Grindelwald and the Eiger Mountain. They could have passed by. Then the three. They could have went by over the uh, St. Gattardo Pass, which I did, which is one of the most amazing drives in the world. It's the highest highway in the Alps. Anyway, and then from there you could visit the three castles in Bellinzona, Switzerland, and then you can finally get to Milan. That is the way to take the trip, and you visit all those places. These guys just drove it really fast, like super fast, like breaking the law fast. Another thing I learned about my trips in Europe is you can, in some countries, drive really fast. Like in Germany, the Autobahn, they don't care. Now, in Switzerland, you can't drive fast. So I question part of this book because they raced through Switzerland. When I was in Switzerland, I was told in my rental car, when I rented the car, the do not break the laws because the traffic tickets are steep. And I took them serious. I obeyed every law. And then two months later, I got a letter in the mail with a photo of me in my rental car, like weaving over the double yellow line. And they sent me a ticket and it was 1500 bucks, 1500 bucks. And I was like, well, this is unreal. Um, so I called the embassy in this, the American embassy in Switzerland. I was like, is this real? And they're like, yes, fax is the ticket. Yeah, it's real. You need to pay it. Anyway, long story short. I googled this phenomena of really expensive tickets that are traffic tickets in Switzerland and there are people that have raced through Switzerland and every camera that they that they passed on those freeways 
mailed them a traffic ticket for $1,500. Some people, they took a trip through Switzerland and when they got home, they had like $9 million worth of traffic tickets in the mail. I'm like, you know, you don't speed through chicken. That was an aside, nothing to do with the book. That was just anyway, I just thought, oh, another thing that I, whenever I read thrillers like this and they talk about places in Europe or anywhere around the world that I haven't been, I Google it. There was a few things that I Googled in here that didn't exist. Like the Chateau Sauvage, that's supposed to be up in above Lake Geneva. I'm like, the only Chateau Sauvage that I Googled was in France, not anywhere near Lake Geneva. But anyway, so I think that James Rollin does use a little bit of artistic license in some of the places he sets scenes at. They're not actual real places. 95% of them are, but the ones that the, some of the ones that I Googled actually just, they didn't exist. Anyway, back to the book. Oh, yeah, Sigma Force. They go on a journey to find out who the terrorists are, and um, it's pretty cool. It's, I, I like this book better than Sandstorm quite a bit. I like this book a lot more than Sandstorm. Sandstorm was the first Sigma Force. This is number two, and I like this one a lot more. I just thought it flowed better. I liked the characters better. I liked the mystery better. I liked everything that was happening in it. I liked the history of the sarcophagi, the history of gold, the history of the liquid um, uh, body armor, and I liked the uh, overall just mystery, sort of the Da Vinci Code-esque mystery behind why the terrorists attacked Cologne Cathedral. Just a great book. Great book. I loved it. Loved it. I'm going to give this one a much better review than Sandstorm. I'm going to give this one a 9.5 out of 10 because it's just dynamite. And I can't wait to read the other Sigma Force novels. If there's any Alpha Force novels out there, I'm probably going to read those. I don't know who has written them. Maybe I should write them. If there's any Beta Force novels, no, no.